there, internet. Magua here, and I have no idea what the fuck just happened. I was tweaking my decks and getting ready to record the intro, and I go back to the beginning screen, and I have this background that I've never seen before. Uh, I think the patch hit in the middle of my recording, because after I finished the game, it kind of like reset, <laughs> and uh, I I don't know. I thought there was like a thresh background here, to be honest. Like I have, I really am very confused right now. But I'm gonna roll with it, you know, for dramatic intensity i guess or just viewer confusion in general i've always liked that you know you remember i used to have a brazilian flag in the background <laughs> i like i like confusing people and things and stuff so yeah having that said essentially nothing because i just rambled about nothing we're gonna talk about today's deck ladies and gentlemen as i am in a showcase cold food back at it again but in a different form Pretty much the same size, but different form nonetheless. Because the original concept for Tom Kench and Cold Food is to combine them with Ash and utilize Frostbite Synergy alongside Tom Kench to, uh, you know, have a pretty neat mid-range deck that has some pretty good matchups out there, right? Unfortunately, Cold Food thrives in a bit of a slower metagame environment than the one we're in now. So I decided to build a, a deck around Tom Kench. I'm going to bring you guys Tom Kench Soraka, right? But I feel like that's... I've been going a little bit standard as of late, right? Even though I've been showcasing older decks, I wanted to actually brew something myself again. And I really felt like bringing back this beloved archetype. I really love combining Tom Kench with Froyard. Froyard is also very underrepresented in the meta right now. So I felt like it's a pretty edgy hipster region to, uh, you know, build around. And that also was, uh, you know, a porn motivator right there. As most of this deck is failure, we only have three, three copies of Salvage and three copies of Tom Kench. The idea behind this is because we're combining Braum and Tom Kench, we have a deck that is trying to stall as much as possible until turn six, in which we drop the Howling Abyss, and then we start generating level two champions every round, which will allow us to ultimately outvalue and bully our opponent in the later portions of the game. So how do we make it there? Because there's a lot of aggression running around, right? Uh, we have a lot of healing. We have Kylie Tavern Keeper and Blighted Ravine. Because we're playing Froyard, we get access to good board wipes and also good healing as well. Albeit a bit limited because beyond these two options, there's not really much more going on in that regard. Nonetheless, uh, this alongside Everest Sentry, Icefill Archers, Omen Hawk, which we're playing this as a three of, by the way, because we don't have that many units compared to other decks. And therefore, the we have some really nice chances of buffing stuff like our champions in Braum and Tom Kench. And a buff, a plus one, plus one boost on any of these two goes a long way. While also Omen Hawk gives us a chump blocker early on to trade into Legion Saboteur, Inventive Chemist, and you know, all of these little one drops that are running around in Noxus Bandle City variants, right? So I felt like it was a good moment to play Omen Hawk for that early defense and also early investment to get more value and make our big four mana champions uh, harder to remove. Because essentially, Tom Kench serves, it's a similar purpose to the one uh, he serves in Tom Kench Soraka, right? But the difference is here, we're using the threat of an acquired taste more as a way to force our opponent to make some awkward passes, right? Because we're going to keep that in our hand, that fleeting acquired taste, as much as we can as our opponent is slowly but surely, you know, building up their board and they have that poppy that they don't want to drop because they don't want to have it eaten. So they're trying to see if uh, I can, you know, jump the gun and eat something else. And that's where a lot of the mind games come with this deck. This is a very difficult deck to pilot perfectly. Uh, I still make mistakes with it personally. And it is very punishing in that regard because the moment you make a mistake and you slip with Tom Kench and they remove him from the board you lose the game, right? Uh, especially if you've committed to capturing and you've captured two of their big units or whatever. It, it can be difficult. So if you're a beginner to the game, I don't really recommend this deck, though I am going to provide you guys with a very long upload today, like longer than my my other ones. I'm going to feature five games, just so you guys have a bit uh, more of a sample size. And I want to showcase, you know, the highs and the lows of the build, because we definitely have some weaknesses. First of all, uh, I would argue our worst matchup is the Bandle Tree decks, because they have access to Scorched Earth, which can knock out our Howling Abyss. They can spread out and swarm really well, which we can handle with our Ravines and our Avalanches, right? But Poppy, we struggle a little bit more with, because we don't have a clean way of dealing with her besides Tom Kench. And when Tom Kench is taking damage, it's not 
not a clean way either. So keep that in mind. Poppy Ziggs is also dangerous because we are a slow build, right? Like we, it takes a while for our win condition to go online. So we're vulnerable to late game burn, like Deathmate. We can stabilize the board really well, which gives us really good matchups against decks like Draven Scion, for example. We do really well against Draven Scion. We also do really well against Zoe Nami because Tom Kench is a Nami counter, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't know that, right? And Acquired Taste, they really have no way to counter it. So we can just constantly threaten to eat Nami, to eat their Shelly, and as, as long as we're able to control their engine, we can deal with the rest of their board. And we can start whacking out their weak-ass elusives, and we can also flash freeze them whenever they get a little bit out of hand, and we need to stall a little bit more as we start generating our own value. Believe me, I've tested the matchup, and it's, it's been wonders. So we do really well against some of the top tier meta decks out there, but we do, we are vulnerable to others, right? So keep that in mind. I'd like to try this out in a tournament. Like I, I uh, maybe in like an gauntlet. I, I could try to design a lineup that can capitalize on this as I try to like soft target Scion Draven and Zoe Nami. So yeah, just keep that in mind. It's a very, very interesting deck. I wanted to, well, Maybe that's a bit biased of me to say, but I, I think it's I think it's an interesting concept. We got troll gifts, which can be used to either grant Brom plus two plus two, which is a pretty big deal, or give Tom Catch regeneration. And uh, I really wanted to see if I could make this card highlight in a deck. It does all right. It puts in the work. It's reliable in certain scenarios, but uh, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a three of. But we're gonna keep it that way for now. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the deck list right there. Board wipes, healing, frostbites, health boost to keep uh, our very important units on the board and then Howling Abyss to just start generating us crazy value. And then the, ended up finding us a combination of some broken level two champions and we win the game that way. So we, we go Hearthstone boys <laughs> with this build, but it is, uh, it's just a blast, man. Like I said, I'm not recommending this if you wanna try hard climb ladder, especially like quickly because the games are long with this build, <laughs> like games take a while. Nonetheless, uh, it's just, it's, it's really fun to play and it's very fresh as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you do. And that's all I gotta say. Have a solid day. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. Love ya. Enjoy the matches. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, here we go. Lulu Poppy. Bit of a scary deck to face because of the threat of rallies, but I, I am happy to see Omen Hawk here. I'm gonna mulligan away the Three Sisters and the Salvage. Just because this Frostbite is a bit too expensive for the early game. Always happy to see the bird, and uh, happy to see one of my champions, too. But we gotta figure out how to deal with, you know, the the pressure that Poppy brings. Seeing Avalanche opens up certain plays, but obviously having to, having to decide when to commit to Tom Kench and when to go for the Avalanche, it, it depends on how we draw, right? Like, right now, we'll take it one turn at a time. Play bird. Bird is a word. Salvage is not really a good draw, but. So. How do I reach? You best believe I don't play. These kids. Serving left. Oh, they're out there. I'll spot them. I'm gonna play Omen Hawk because he could want to play Lulu. But if he plays the Hungry Owlcat, probably bait in a trade here. But if, if he would have played Lulu, I would have attacked with everything, and that could have encouraged him to block, and then I could have threatened him with an avalanche. But because um, he, he either doesn't have Lulu or is not playing her on curve, I can still offer this trade, because the spell shield is a little bit annoying. Even though we have a good blocker into it, the problem is this thing, right? But as long as he's open attacking, that doesn't mean that means he's not developing Poppy. If he develops Poppy here, um, a very... I really just want to deal. I could go for an avalanche, right? I, I I stopped them generating value, but I also lose my two blockers here. The pass. That's perfect. 
perfectly fine. I'm just buying turns, anyways. Like, wouldn't be a quest without some danger. The reason why I'm frostbiting this is because I force him to attack with Poppy, right? In order to trigger it. Stay back. Ready the torches. Salvage here, like I, I wonder when I'll have time to go for it. So for no second, uh, Poppy. Ten cards in his deck. It's just E E E into E E E. Man, I, I really I can't wait for them to fix this shit. <laughs> like this card is kind of nonsense. I think a one six bronze is gonna be really useful here. Very, very useful. But I need I I, I wanna set up the Tom Kench first. At least now we know. There's no more threat of relentless pursuit. I'm gonna keep on passing here. Bro, what if I have an avalanche? It doesn't matter, he's not losing any value. God knows what he's generated, dude. Like, he could have double Crescent Strike. Like, or Crescent Strike and... Billion things. With triple loping... I, I know one loping telescope made the other loping telescope, but I don't know what these two made. And it, I, I can't even, like, begin to... Wonder what it is, you know? Start picking them off. If this broad attack goes through, no. Oh. That's funny. Why not just do this? Some troll gifts. Getting Brom even thicker. We got the mighty Poro in there, and we have the threat of an acquired taste, but we have to make good use of this. Like, we can't jump the gun with it. Well, I mean, there's no... There's no actual threat now. For two mana, it can be a single combat or a sharp sight. None of that stops this, so... You know, barrier does not protect from the Kench. Tommy boy can digest it. Protection included. This man's going is just it's wide. That's all. It's always about, baby. I'm sure there's something. 
Okay, there's a howling at this. It's hard to find the momentum to play this card though. Like I said, I need to build up quite a bit of mana. The threat of rally exists. Like this matchup is pretty, pretty spooky because of that. Because we want to have time to do our things. But our opponent doesn't really let us. I mean, that's his game plan, right? Like not letting us breathe. He has to go wide. That's why I hate this card, man. It just, it makes it so easy. It's so, it's so fucking, and it's also like very, just variance, right? But it feels like they always find a loping telescope with a loping telescope, and that's just so dumb. And that's one of the annoying things, right? Like, well, like it's not, you know, as, as much as I love this, you know, the, the meta, and I think the devs are doing overall a great job, uh, it's important to point out shit that pisses you off. So this is definitely the turn in which we can't afford to. If they have a third poppy, we're dead. So we gotta do... We cannot acquire taste with, with that. We're gonna make the play that... that Spends less. So flash freeze at six mana, leave me with three. Think hard. Think strong. Is that the best... Game plan here. Allow me a small This is the moment where we play the Howling Abyss. The take card is going to be really good with Tom Kench. And while our plays are limited here, we have the combination of these plus a challenger. But if there's a moment to play Howling Abyss now, we're so low. I mean, we have health gain. That's definitely something that we can pass on. Where there's a will, there's oh, okay, a that's good. I mean, Rek'Sai is also very good, don't get me wrong. A 3-mana 4-7 with Overwhelm, that's that's pretty above average. But I, I gotta stay alive, man. I am so low on health, I gotta, I gotta find a way to get back in this game. I have to be very, very careful with my sequencing here. Brahm is also close to leveling up. Today the food fights back. Okay, so Furious Fae Folk. What will you have? A bag of your warmest milk, my friend. We need the warm milk. Warm milk will allow us to survive <laughs> this man's fury! Okay, we could see we could see a situation in which he has like he definitely has to have some sort of rally effect, right? I should have played no, I couldn't play Rek'Sai. You are safe with brawl. My comestibles feel cold. Oh, we have grown! <laughs> and half 
I just realized the level up happens because of the quick attack, so I get to knock it out, so I'm not vulnerable, actually, to that. What am I vulnerable to, then? Pokey Stick. Do you even play Pokey Stick in this deck? Maybe you do. I mean, if they have Pokey Stick, I can't really play around it because I, I my two sources of healing are just uh, three mana or higher. Like, if he has Pokey Stick in, in the deck, I'm dead, anyways. So I'm not sure what I'm playing around here. I still have this combination. Living on the limit! Okay, so... Can we push for lethal in any shape or form? I'd be more comfortable just finding... More health gain. I mean, we have protection for days now from anything combat related. The eye of twilight sees all. It must be done. So I go. The river always provides. How about another round? Have you met my shield? Left for a snack? <laughs> I forgot it gives itself one attack regardless. <laughs> Alright. I mean... Ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at Lethal here. Is there any reason not to go for it? I mean, what could stop us? Stress defense? Probably should have worded my attack a little bit different, so I could... Yeah. Got him! Mama, we got him! Oh, from what health, by the way? You Living on the limit! Round two. All right, Poppy Ziggs, important matchup. But to be honest, the first time I came into it, so we're gonna find out together just how good we are against this deck. I'm gonna do a full mulligan because I want units, you know, stuff like, oh, oh my god. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. This always happens, man. When I queue into aggro, I just draw all my high-end cards. Like, what the fuck is this? Well, no Omen Hawk, uh, but no, no one drop, it seems, for them either. We have double tavern keeper, so it's not awful, but a little bit triggered because I have, I have like games that drag out forever and I don't draw Howling Abyss. But of course, the first time I queue into Poppy Ziggs, <laughs> I have double of them in my opener. But like I said, they did have a one drop, so it could have been much worse. I kind of want to play Iceville Archer depending on what they develop here. Time to bust out some combustion. I don't like this archer at all. Winter take you. This is fine because I'm going to be able to heal this back. We saw what the Conchala just made. Is it the boosters? Who knows? So now we don't have to fear something like a calling strike. And we do know now that um, they, like, yeah, I, I was going back to what I said. Like, my, I, I was like, sometimes I think and I'm talking at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I just don't get a coherent statement across. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that we don't have to worry about the calling strike. And I don't want to prioritize 
the Kylie Tavern Keepers right now. You don't have to rush the healing when you've only taken three damage. And to be honest, to be honest, now that we have to worry about Noxian and Ferb or Pokey Stick, unless they're they're like weird and they're playing the Ravenous Flock, this is much better because we, we we actually want to level up Brom here, so we, we're gonna take more damage. Spreading out. We see Poppy that's going to force us to Entomb, which is going to be a very expensive play. By freezing this, we stop the impact, so we prevent four damage. And now we play Omen Hawk. Question is, do we play the Howling Abyss? I mean, they, they haven't played Poppy yet, but what if they have Zig's signature spell? Like, I want to be able to Fury of the North as Braum to take out Poppy, potentially, but that means I can have no other play this round. Which is certainly a little bit spooky. I feel this by sword. We should be friends. Let's take this outside. So I want to attack with these two before he gets to ping them. Probably should have challenged this to be fair. No, no, because I want to get the attack with these two. Because if I if I go for Fury of the North, I actually don't kill the Ziggs. Which is a bit of an issue. Look how we have grown. Just let the attack go through. Just to get some damage on him and pass over initiative and see what he does. Now that we don't have, we don't throw him with the attack anymore, we can't answer our poppy is the problem. But I think we've spread out wide enough to be able to withstand that to a certain degree. If I play you, next turn I have a total of 7, 9 mana, which means I have access to... I have access to quite a bit. Come on in. Good times, good friends. What could be better? Like it's very risky for him to go for like a Noxian for we're onto my Brahm. There's is the the bomb, yeah. Look at it go. That's what I was worried about. For two, we still have three blockers, and if they attack with Ziggs, they give us two two poros. This Iceville Archer is really neat as well. By Bandle City Mayor. Right. You are safe with Brawl. Let's talk about your chat.
I'm not gonna play this because I'm still expecting the incoming aloof travelers with double mayor, like it's kinda bound to happen. Probably shouldn't have attacked with the tavern keeper. GG. <laughs> we tried. We really did. Um, we have a lot of healing, but we just don't... We couldn't threaten to Whatever, close the game. Man. Whatever, man! Alright, Draven Scion. Ruined edition. We find the Howling Abyss, which is an integral part of our win condition, but I don't feel like we need to keep it here. I'm gonna drop... It's and I'm gonna keep the Kylian Tavern Keeper and Tom Kench. Uh, naturally, we don't see no to the bird. I mean, Howling Abyss is technically our win condition, but we want to make sure that we can actually match up with Marco. I feel like I have, I have like a hair here that's getting in the way. But, uh, oh, it was actually like fall. <laughs> All right, trade. Nice. We have a full unit hand, which means. Maybe we won't draw... Yeah, we're gonna draw... I had a feeling we are gonna draw a spell there. That's fine. I wanna keep this archer for, you know... Bad Boy Scion. Or Big Bat Scion. I could... Nothing escapes my watch. Safeguard our home! Pass over initiative, and we're looking at a Kylie Tower Keeper. I was thinking of keeping the spell mana for Troll Champ, but I'd rather, I'd rather fill up the board a little bit. He's lining up for this Blighted Ravine, but I don't want to make it obvious that I have it, you know? Let's see what he does. Nice. 
Now I'm gonna play Ice Village. Take some damage, or I could take away the, the axe from him. I'd rather take the axe from him. Ooh. I don't need to play you now. I can play Brom. Because one six Brahm is pretty good. You know, the same can be said for three seven Tom Kench, but I'd rather get a little bit of momentum here. We're kind of like playing a mid-range style here, like we're just getting good value. Okay, drop the spinning axe. I'm not really worried about anything he can develop here, like I feel like him dropping that axe like really takes out a lot, a lot of potential burst momentum that he can generate and you know, he has five mana but I'm not getting them vibes. I got some really easy blocks here. I'm gonna use my stat line. You know, Tompkins got a neat ability, but. Mystic shot. Mystic shot. Alright. In that case. Let's go with that, shall we? Later. We got some good value there. Ah, there it is. Drop that down. I mean, that's something that I love to eat. So I, I can't really chow down on it right now, but... Okay, now I can. But I mean, I kind of want to... I want to keep this flash freeze. More and more damage on him. Slowly creeping up. Who needs Howling Abyss? It's all about good cop, bad cop. We have health gain, but it's important for us to... I mean, now... Yeah, now definitely... I mean, to be fair... I don't need to do that now. I have Flash Freeze. I have another one there. So I have a total of 9 mana, which allows me to do this, 5, and this, yeah. No, no. Way. 
I just realized blo blocking with Rama is a mistake because if he has Scorched Earth. If he has Scorched Earth, you can hit his own Scion here. But the fact that we got all that out of him is just beautiful. So we get that unit back out. I don't know if you forgot about this, brother. I don't know if you forgot about this Tavern Keeper hiding in Tommy's belly. Because now... Your boy has lethal. <laughs> Deception! For the win! Oh no. He... He died. Alright. Not too crazy about this matchup. But, a little bit better, seeing that I have a really solid opener, honestly. Like, I don't want to mulligan anything, just because double Omen Hawk. Like, I, I want to make sure that, I want to do my best so that I draw, like, the buffed up units. I don't want to draw Braum and Tom catch now when I got double bird. Oh, but knowing my luck, man, I'm going to top deck, you know, that champion right now. And I'm going to cry every time. Really want to showcase troll gifts a little bit more, too. Gonna take Mini Morph into account for this one. Uh, it's a pretty strong card against us. Alright, good. All spells. Good, 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 good. Let's get that value. Oh boy. Double it is. Loping Telescope is a very likely play on turn 2 for them. Kanchal just halts us. But Loping Telescope allows us to deal one extra damage, and every ounce of damage matters. Do they have access to healing? This region combination? Not much, right? Bomber Twin does stops us. I didn't know you main deck this card in the thing. Okay, we may just... I'll take the hit. Holy, I mean, I would assume we're gonna draw a unit. <laughs> I, I would assume. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be worth the wait. I mean, hey, if, this, if there's a matchup to showcase troll gifts, it's this one. I have a pretty high spell density, but not that high. Like, it's 16, a little bit above average, but not crazy. I guess I was, I guess I jinxed myself in a way. Oh man, the bluff worked. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on! Holy... Bro! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I literally drew half of my spells. I'm bound to draw units. So they're like relevant ones at this stage. Okay. At this stage, I don't really have to worry about too many things. So before he gets to play a Poppy, I want to go with this. Pretty good value. I could go for the, for the Elixir of Iron, but... Uh-oh. They're coming. Come on! Mind games? I have a secret. Super secret play. I found the unit after having gone through half my deck. Name. 
And you know what the problem is? PS scorched earth. So I'm gonna lose to my own strategy. This is this is this is a game. Yes, mama is the beast, mama. <sighs> Scorch me, daddy. I know I know it's happening. Time to reveal our superior battle tactics. Oh my god, nobody cares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is the worst. May as well give you regeneration. I don't know. I don't know, man. I got. I gotta ease up the space because right now I will actually overdraw. Bro, I do. I drew twenty cards and I got one unit, and they have a scorched earth. I want to cry. <laughs> this is the saddest shit ever, man. 20 cards, 20 draws, and I... Are you telling me? Like... Oh my god, dude! What the fuck? Uh... Yeah. I guess. Ah, oh, fuck it. May as well. I don't know why I went for the troll chant, to be honest. <laughs> this is the thickest, the strongest Avarosa Sentry the land of Runeterra has ever seen. Okay. I mean, at this point, you know, like he does the attack, he gets valuable from this band of commando. Like, bruh. I guess his calculations were a little bit off. Understandable. It's very complex mathematics. You know, it's also complex mathematics like this. How is this even pop? I, I don't even have that many spells. Wait, how 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 does this happen? Oh, because I had double, I have, I actually do have this many spells. I have 16 spells, plus three, wait, 16 spells only? That doesn't, oh, the landmarks as well. Of course. Not only units, but landmarks too. Well, I did draw one actually. Oh, shit. All right. It's about time. I, I still can't believe I'm so I'm actually still drawing spells. This is a thing that happened. That is just the most depressing shit ever. All right, we draw one more card. I actually want this Avros to die at this point, to be honest. Fight the signal fires. We did it, guys. We got a Brom. Let us get going. We got a Brom. We got a Brom. I have 14 cards left in my deck. Uh-oh. We had a Brom. We had a brown. I mean, I literally can't draw any more spells, <laughs> but I can't draw landmarks. Uh yeah. I, I want to stay optimistic, but a howling abyss that's been taking off for several turns and. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think I gotta cry, Uncle. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can redeem ourselves. All right, our last opponent is Humility himself. I'm gonna drop the flash freeze as we find Brom. 
Flash Freeze, don't get me wrong, Flash Freeze is incredibly important in this match. But we have triple three sisters and Flash Freeze and Archer, so... I... I mean... I should be very careful about what I say, considering... The matchup we just had. So I, 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 don't, I can't really speak confidently about what cards I am actually going to draw from this point onwards, because... At this point we know anything can happen. As long as the body holds blood. If he dropped, I get excited. Alright. That works for me. Trade? No? Really? Tch, noob. I'm, I'm having like PTSD with this bird right now. Like I, I drew this Omen Hawk and I'm just like... Expecting to draw 20 spells in a row now. It's not even possible, I don't even have that many, but somehow it will happen. <laughs> that opening hand looks so good too. Like, oh my god, it was so good. Like double Omen Hawk and some spells. Yeah, I mean the the beautiful thing about this is that humility here is actually just Probably I'm not sure if I should do this, but I want to cycle through my deck. We draw into a salvage, see what we draw into now for something relevant. Not really, okay. Alright, so the party has arrived. Now the question is, do we play Tom Kench? Or do we play I think we play Tom Kench. Axes coming right up. I think this hit. Preserve this jump block for later. Giving him Axis doesn't feel great, but considering he discarded two, two discarding cards, a will, a I think we're fine. Play Omen Hawk number two. Uh, please take a salvage, please take a salvage! Okay, okay, no, actually, actually that's better. Holy shit, that's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> All calculated, baby! Actually, I still would prefer it for it to be a salvage. Just start picking off his units here, to be honest. I could eat something, but I don't feel like I need to. Alright. Seriously, your spell is actually not bad here. I'm worried about Scorched Earth because it can bypass. Like, some decks like to play it as a one off. I have more than enough blockers here for now. It's going to pass. Bam, bam, bam. I could have gone for card draw though. It's not like I'm hyper. I mean, he has to attack, right? Or maybe not. I mean, this thing, he doesn't have to worry about. Like, I can only block with Mighty Poro onto it. Nah, he wants. He wants more. I'm gonna chow down. I still have mana for Troll Chant, so unless... I mean, if he has a Ravenous Flock, it's gonna suck. Okay, I was expecting maybe a Survival Instinct. Wow. Okay, so I actually want to take the full hit. Do I? Okay, so if he hits me... He hits me for 5, I drop down to 6. 
and then he actually kills me exactly. But if I go for a troll chant that I give you plus two health, then not only do I level up. And I thought I was already perfect. <laughs> well, you're not. Look how we have grown. Timing's a bit off. Oh, wait. Alright, this level Braum putting in the work. Okay, so. Boosting up my Tom Kench. It's nice to have these these card this card draw here. Allows us to refuel, but with this deck, you, even though we're playing triple salvage, you don't necessarily want to. I'm gonna play Omen Hawk. Troll chant there. Alright. The thing is, even if we lose Tom Kench, they get back a, a Twin Blade Revenant. Which is not the end of the world. But now we play the tiebreaker, or the balance breaker, or whatever. <laughs> okay. To be expected. You know, but again, could be worse. We're gonna go for the card draw now, so we don't burn mana. Nice, we find the archer, which is absolutely essential, so that we don't succumb to a scion immediately. We still got our Braum, we lost our Tom Kent, but like I said, in this matchup, like, in the way the game was going specifically, did this... Ooh, that's a good one! Chill. Relax, buddy. Yeah, okay, have a nice tea. So angry. Join me in battle. <laughs> I didn't know they had an interaction. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> Yes. I'll pull you 
Okay, someone's going in. <laughs> what do we get now? Echo! Oh, that's nice. We still got the uh, the three sisters here as well. We can take all scions all day, man. Things aren't gonna improve themselves. I mean, at this point, just better off doing this, clearing 80% of his board, getting him down to four, also triggering Braum. Feels like a win-win to me. <laughs> They're best friends forever. Meet the Avengers, ladies and gentlemen. Bit of them. All right. Heimer, you take the lead. Thank you, buddy. I really think you actually didn't do anything. Like, I actually played no turrets. Five mana, three five, baby. OP. This is totally not hyper redundant, by the way. Got him. You know what? That makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> How you this is fun, man. Oh, uh, we are still now. All right. Where's the after party? I know, right? <laughs>